so I'm going to go ahead and introduce our speaker, Julie Bless. Um, she is the statewide wildlife education and volunteer coordinator for Nevada Department of Wildlife, also known as NDOW. Um, I've actually been a volunteer with Julie for three or four years at this point in time. So um, I'm excited for her to get to share some of the work that I've been involved in, but some of the other projects that um, NDOW has available. Uh, she's been with the department for about five years now, and uh, she did. She does have a history of working for National Audubon um, prior to coming to Nevada. So she's a birder and excited to share some of uh, the work that she's got going on at Endow. So I'll let you go ahead and take it away, Julie. Thank you, Jenny. And yes, you were... You've been a volunteer with us since I started pretty much because I started in the fall and then the Sagegrass project starts in the spring and you were there. So you've been you've been around for a long time. So very excited to be here. And there are a ton of opportunities and partnership opportunities between Audubon and Endow. And I personally think you are all great people. I also love birds. So I'm excited to share some of the opportunities that we have. Um, and please feel free to ask questions in the chat. Um, I'll probably be done before this is supposed to be wrapped up. Um, so if you have questions, if you have comments or ideas or anything like that, I would love to hear it. Um, but I'm going to talk about um, our different projects that we have within the department. And this first slide here shows... May I just make a brief announcement, Julie? I wanted to also say, for those of you watching on Facebook right now, uh, I am monitoring the Facebook chat. Uh, so feel free if you have questions, type them in there and uh, I will uh, ask them, or Jenny will ask them uh, during our Q&A session. Yes, afterwards. Thank you, Parker, that's really helpful. And I just threw my email into the chat and I'll show it again um, because I'm your contact. If you really wanna do anything volunteer wise, I won't be your main contact, but I can get you to the right person. Um, so these are the main divisions that we use volunteers for, fisheries, game, habitat, diversity, and conservation education. And there's lots of different opportunities within these different divisions. They do serve different purposes as well. So the first one that I'm gonna start with is our game division. And if you are a hunter, you probably know that this week is a very special week for us. It is our big game tag application. And our game division does focus on managing those species that you can harvest. So that's our waterfowl, upland game, those large mammals, and some predators as well. These projects, um, one that I met Jenny on, and actually Jenny is in this photo, is our stage grouse surveys. I think this is such a fun project, um, and especially with you birders out there, this is uh, super fun, um, but it is a project that requires extra dedication. I think our sage grass volunteers are super dedicated. Um, number one, if you look at this map here, this is where Reno is, that blue dot, and then all of those red dots are sage grass legs. So that's what the surveys are doing is you go out and you check out sage grouse lex, these different locations, which are where sage grouse males are performing to lure the females in, which is a wildlife wonder. It's definitely a cool thing to see, but a lot of them are really far away and you are required to have a four by four vehicle. Um, and uh, the super fun part is you have to be there before the sun rises. So you're driving super far away on uh, unpaved roads, trying to get there before the sun rises, but still a very, very neat project. We are not recruiting for volunteers right now because this is happening right now, but next year we will definitely be recruiting volunteers, especially for this Northern Washoe County area. So if you're like, this is totally my jam, please send me an email and I'll get you on our list for next year. Um, and if you have questions about what this project is like, Jenny is one of our volunteers. So she's a great person to pick her brain about this project. Mammal captures are another one of our 
game volunteer opportunities. This is a semi-exclusive um, project because we don't have a ton of volunteers on these types of projects, but it is a cool thing to be able to offer to some of our long long-term super dedicated volunteers down the line um, to go out on a mammal capture. And uh, on these, these captures, this one is clearly a sheep capture. We do also capture deer and pronghorn antelope and they get collared, they get checked for various diseases uh, in sheep. Female sheep actually get an ultrasound to see if they're pregnant. So that is something- hey, Julie, sorry to interrupt you. Um, you're kind of fading in and out, so I don't know if um, you you can stay close to the microphone or... <laughs> I think it might just be my microphone, but I'm going to try and stand closer to it, and hopefully that helps a little bit. Thank you, Thank Jenny. You. I think I need a new microphone camera combo is what I need. So our mammal captures um, are another opportunity. And again, if you are interested in something like this, I can get you on a list. Like I said, it is a little bit more exclusive um, because they are smaller projects. They also happen, they're not set dates. When the weather's good, when the helicopter is in the area, um, that is when we decide to go. And here is a quick video of what these captures look like. These are all of our health checks. And the sheep's faces are covered so that they remain calm, which is pretty similar to what we do with birds too, which is kind of cool. And this is what they look like. Um, we do have some other game opportunities aside from sage grouse and um, the bighorn sheep captures. If you're into sheep, we have a group of volunteers that go out and they go and look for lambs. And we had a couple go out this past weekend and um, this is a pretty hardcore project. You're climbing mountains and you may or may not see lambs, but if that's something you're interested in, we do plan on growing the project and making it more of a community science thing so we can get a lot of people out, out on the mountains looking for these lambs. And that is a twice a year thing. This time of year, you're looking for young lambs. And then later in the year, it's actually a mortality survey because we have a pretty high mortality with lambs um, due to a lot of the wildlife diseases that are going around. Um, another project that we have with mammals, with game captures, I'm actually forgetting, but we also have bear stuff. So, I was talking with Jenny and the crew before we went live. Uh, we don't have a ton of volunteers directly working with bears, but we do have what we're calling, we're not calling them bear rangers, but we are calling them bear rangers. We need to come up with a, with a better name. Um, but they work in the Tahoe area, Carson area of Nevada in those neighborhoods that have a high, conflict with bears. So we're looking for people who are not storing their garbage properly and are leaving attractants out for the bears. So that's a project that if you are in the area, that's a great one. Um, kind of tattletale on your neighbors a little bit, but also keep your bear population healthy. So it is, a, it is an important job. Wood duck nest boxes are another game one. And I don't know if any of you have ever helped us with this project in Fallon, but there are about 400 wood duck nest boxes along the river in Fallon. And it used to be a giant project with Chris Nikolai, if any of you are familiar. Um, and if you are, you know, he no longer works here in Nevada. So we took the project over. However, it is a different project now. So we aren't having people check all summer long. We're actually doing two checks. We already did one in February, and that was just to check on the boxes, make sure that they are, were in good condition, clean them out, and then make a record of if one needs to be replaced, if they're getting knocked down. 
And then in the fall, we'll check them again and see which ones were used and we'll use that data. So instead of uh, surveying the ducks that are there and checking eggs and chicks and all of that, we're actually just maintaining the nest boxes. So help that we can use with this are people to go out and check them twice a year and any woodworkers that want to make boxes or have wood to donate or handy people that want to repair boxes, we will take all of it because of 400 nest boxes. It's a lot. And we want to keep maintaining them because those that project has been around for, I think, over 20 years or so. So the ducks are really dependent on those nest boxes at this point. So those are our game projects for the most part. And um, this is not an exhaustive list of our projects. So if there is a project that I don't mention, it's okay. But please keep in contact, keep in contact if you're interested. Habitat, our habitat division does exactly what it sounds like. They manage habitat, plantings, seed collection, um, basically making our habitat look all pretty. Um, this picture here is a planting project that took place on a fire in the Virginia range not too long ago. And I think we worked with USGS and we planted over 40,000 sagebrush plugs. So pretty large projects. We're always in need of more people for projects like these. Other projects are guzzler builds. These are really large projects, usually involves like a big camp out the weekend of. And if you don't know what a guzzler is, this is what they look like. They are out in very dry areas and they collect rainwater and then store them in these bins here. And then this right here is the drinker. And you can see all of these wildlife trails that animals are using this area. So this is where big game, small game, they come to these and they get water in some of these really, really dry areas. These projects are super fun because it is crazy to see it all come together. They are constructed basically in one weekend. There might be a couple, couple things that are done the week before, but they are completed basically the week of. Um, sometimes we drop water on these guzzlers. This was in 2019 um, because the guzzler was super dry. We weren't getting enough precipitation. So we were actually hauling water. Uh, we have a lot more guzzlers in Southern Nevada than we do in Northern Nevada. And there are a couple ways you can volunteer with us with this is you can help construct the guzzlers on a guzzler project, or we also, record uh, volunteer hours from volunteers that go out and just check a guzzler themselves. And then they let us know if something is broken, if something needs to be repaired, if they saw a bunch of animals at the guzzler, which is always a good sign, or um, if they saw a bunch of wild horses, that's something to consider too. Um, but that's another way that you can get involved with guzzlers. Our habitat division also manages our wildlife management areas, which we, I wish I could remember the number that we have, but we are actually getting more. I think we're getting two more, at least one more. Um, but these areas are really neat areas. Anyone can explore these areas. They are kept and managed specifically for wildlife. People can hunt or fish in these areas, but you can also camp and hike. And some of these areas are great for birding and bird watching. And our volunteers in these areas do a lot of maintenance. So they'll be keeping up bathrooms. We have campground um, posts that work at the campgrounds. They repair fences. They make sure that the roads are all right. So this is that's a heavy maintenance project, but all really super, super helpful things for us at our wildlife management areas. Fisheries, we have several projects within our fisheries division. Our fisheries obviously manage fish, and we do that in a couple ways through hatcheries and through spawning and stocking, and then obviously fish surveys. This right here is an electroshocking fish project. Sometimes, especially in this area, we have to clear out some of the canals that go dry in sometimes. So this um, 
this was a project where they were collecting fish and moving them to a different area because the area was going to go dry. Um, we also electrofish for other reasons, not just relocating, but those are those are two things that we definitely use volunteers for. Um, spawning, this is a really popular uh, project for volunteers to get in on, which is at Marlette Lake. And uh, we spawn fish there. It's obviously beautiful, but this is some of those eggs and sperm. The magic is happening in that bowl right there. Um, creating new fish. And we take those eggs and they get taken to a hatchery. We also use volunteers to help with different stocking. If that's something you're into, if fish is your thing, we have lots of things that you can do with us. Wildlife diversity. So this is probably where there is the most connection with Audubon. This is all of our non-game species. So there is a pika in this picture. And yes, we do have pika in Nevada. And we do have a pretty new pika community science volunteer project. And if you, I, I'm super excited about it. Like I wanna go survey pika. Basically it involves climbing a bunch of mountains in different areas and letting us know if you saw pika, heard pika or saw signs of pika. And there are several different locations in this part of the state. There's some in Northern Washoe, there's a couple semi-locally, and then there's some out towards Tonopah. Um, but if you're interested in this project, please let me know. We are super excited about it because who doesn't love a pika? We also do a lot of bat surveys and um, Nevada has a very large amount of species of bats. I think we're one of the highest in the United States for diversity of bat species, which is pretty cool. We do a project every year. It's called the Bat Blitz. We haven't done it for two years because of COVID, um, but this is a project where we get a bunch of people out. We get a lot of volunteers and a location is picked Every year it's a different location so that different parts of the state are being surveyed, but it's basically a bio blitz for just bats and it's over several days and the these nets, which are the same nets that get used for birds they're mist nets. These nets get put up and then all night long they're surveying catching bats surveying them putting bands on them checking the health. Um, checking species. It's a very, very cool project. If you are super into bats, uh, we take volunteers on this project. If you want to handle bats, you do have to have your rabies shots. Um, and we do have experienced volunteers that are like our bat, they are our bat volunteers and um, they can help get the bats out of the net. But there are there is some training. There are, obviously, you, you have to get your rabies shots if you want to handle bats. I don't have my rabies shots, but I still go, and you can still help set up the nets and, um, and help with things. You're just not going to touch the actual animal. We have, um, in Southern Nevada, we have a lot more opportunities to survey animals that are cold-blooded. We don't have a ton of opportunities here, um, but if you're ever in Southern Nevada or if you, uh, if you have trips planned there and you see a Gila monster, we need to know. Our uh, Southern region herpetologist, he is a big, big Gila monster guy and we want to know where you see those animals. Um, we do tag some other animals, but um, really herps, for, for the herping, it's just, did you see it? It's just occurrences. Um, another project that we have that we can always use volunteers for are our raptor surveys. And those happen in the winter. And we are always looking for volunteers that are experienced in identifying birds and experienced in identifying raptors. And uh, we're always looking for volunteers. They usually go out and help a biologist, but it would also be super helpful if you could go out on your own, uh, depending on 
on how experienced you are, how comfortable you are with that type of survey, but we're always looking for experienced birders for that type of survey. So one of our last divisions that I see a lot of um, crossover with is conservation education. And conservation education kind of has two separate um, lines, I guess. We have like our skills volunteers, our skills, which are the hunter ed, angler ed, and archery ed. And then we have wildlife ed and urban wildlife. And that's my area of expertise, but we can use volunteers for all of it. Um, and you can see in this picture, you know, manning a table, which I know Audubon is very experienced at. Um, we do operate the Oxbow Nature Study Area. And I know Jenny and Parker and I have discussed um, a bigger partnership with that. This area is amazing. I know that there are bird walks led there all the time. And um, I'm sure you all feel the same way that I do, but it is really this treasure within downtown Reno, this very urbanized area where there, is, there are these immense wildlife viewing opportunities that you can't even believe it. It's amazing. Um, but our volunteers at Oxbow, they help with programming, which is very important. We have a lot of uh, field trips that go through here and you can see one of our volunteers is presenting on looks like some of our uh, aquatic mammals that live in the area, our friendly beavers. Um, and then this is some of the other things that our volunteers do. We, uh, we run a program called NASP. It's the National Archery in the Schools program. And it is really, really cool. I don't know anything about archery, had very little experience in it until I took this job. And that program, uh, we work and we work with teachers in schools. They're usually physical education teachers. And we train them how to teach this course. And there's all this curricula surrounding it. There's physics, there's math, there's all this awesome stuff. And they basically start their own archery team. And then we host a very large tournament, which is what is in this photo. And the super cool thing about archery is you do not have to be the tallest or the strongest or the fastest. It's an incredibly inclusive sport. And in the sport, you can see, you know, the smallest people that maybe wouldn't be the most athletic beating some of these other people that might be more physically able in, in some different ways, but um, a really, really awesome sport. So if you are interested in archery at all, that's an awesome program for you. Um, then we also have our uh, angler, angler volunteers. If fishing is your thing, we're always looking for people who have that background. Um, hunting too, this is our Operation Game Thief trailer. And uh, Operation Game Thief, if you're not familiar, is a program to help reduce um, poaching and catch poachers. And we do a lot of programming on game cooking too, which is pretty fun. Uh, this is our Trout in the Classroom program. And we do dissections in the classroom. The students raise little trout eggs in their classroom and then they release them back into the river. They're all sterile fish, um, but this is what this program looks like. And we host this time of year, we host tons of field trips of kids coming to Oxbow or we're taking them to an area near their school or if they're in Clark County, they're going somewhere else to release their fish back into the water. So here's an Oxbow nature study area. I know you all know what it looks like. Um, volunteers that volunteer at Oxbow and Jessica Wolf is your contact for that. You can email me too, but I'm gonna forward you to her. Uh, she manages Oxbow nature study area. And so at Oxbow, we can always use educators to help with field trips lead bird walks, those types of things. But we're, we also need help with any maintenance. Um, as many of you might know, there was a pretty large fire that swept through there about 10 years ago. 
And these are volunteers helping to plant more vegetation and help restore that area. But we are always looking for help. Um, we have those friendly beavers that are constantly building and rebuilding dams that can flood our trails and damage some of our boardwalks and decks that are near the river. So we are pretty much weekly dismantling a beaver dam and that is something we could definitely use help on. So those are all of the projects that we have available for the most part. Uh, there are more than that, but we are always, always looking for more volunteers. We're always looking to um, get more people involved. Um, a big thing with our volunteer program is that not only are our volunteers benefiting us, because obviously we are, we are a pretty small agency as far as state agencies go, and we have a lot of ground to cover, and we are um, always looking for people to help us get more data, engage more people, engage more students in our programming. But on the other side, we get federal grants uh, through WISFER, which is the Wildlife and Sport Fish Restoration. And that is where our Dingle Johnson and Pittman Robertson dollars come through this program. And in order to get those grants, we have to match them. And I think it's 40% we have to match, but these grants can be very, very large, uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars to over a million dollars, depending on what program they're serving. And we are very fortunate that we can use volunteer hours and miles to use as match. So it's something that I think is a huge source of, well, I know that it is a huge source of, source of pride for our volunteers, especially um, some of the hunting groups like NBU, uh, the Bighorn Fraternity, Chucker Chasers, all of those groups, they are very, very proud of the volunteer hours that they give to us because they know that it is making money. So it's this source of pride that people are giving back um, without us having to use uh, a lot of license dollars, et cetera, they're giving money in a different way. And so I do think it is important to share that when you volunteer with us, we do record your hours and miles and we get, if you are an instructor or if you're a skilled volunteer. So for example, on some of those guzzler builds, we'll have people that have special skills like welding or maybe they're operating a bobcat they fall under a different hourly rate than our basic volunteers. And they get us $43.99 an hour, whereas our regular volunteers, which most of our project volunteers, if you come out on a project and you're helping with a guzzler or you're identifying birds for us or um, you, you're doing a planting, that is gonna get us $36.36 an hour and then also your miles. So if you've ever volunteered for us, um, you've probably been in contact with me or my cohorts around the state and we are really picky about how your hours and miles are entered into our system. And that is because the federal government is very picky about it because we are getting lots and lots of money from it. So. Volunteering is really important to the projects, but it also gives us a lot of money. It really does. It's, it's a way to monetarily give back to conservation. Um, so just to recap on our different volunteer opportunities, we have kind of two channels that you can go in. We have our project volunteers, which require little to no training depending on what the project is. And you do not need a background check because you're not typically working with the public. And then we have our instructor uh, bucket, which is does require training. It's very public facing and you do require a background check. So those are all of our education volunteers and people that are uh, very public facing, working at our events,
teaching classes, helping with field trips, all of that. Um, this is kind of the, uh, the target audience of some of these volunteers. For our instructors, retired teachers, super friendly, have experience educating, have experience working with kids. Um, and I know a lot of our Audubon folks have that experience. And our project volunteers, Boy Scouts and Girl Scout groups, nonprofit groups, any person off the street that just wants to help out. Um, that is pretty much any person can help with our project volunteers. Um, if you are interested in these, to become an instructor, which I've given you my contact, um, we have regional coordinators and on our website, we do have a page where you can kind of click what you're interested in. And I will share that with you because I'm pretty sure I have it pulled up. Uh, but you can click different interest forms and it'll get sent to the right coordinator and they'll contact you. Um, but for any projects, we do have um, on our website as well, you can look up what you can just sign up for right now. Um, but you can also just contact me and be like, hey, these are my skills. Is anyone looking for this? And I can get you connected to the right person. Let me get you that link here on how to become a volunteer for instructor. That is our instructor page. And then our um, regular volunteer page that will take you to where you sign up. It says find volunteer opportunities, sign in here. And then there's a couple uh, FAQs if you're interested, but you can also just email me directly. You can also call me. I'm always down to chat um, about volunteers and get your number down and any of that. Um, but those are those links with that. That is the majority of what I've got. I am super open to any questions, comments. Um, if you've got any ideas for things, I'm here for it. Thanks, Julie. Um, that was great to see an overview of all of the projects. I've, um, as Julie mentioned, I have been a Sage Grouse um, volunteer for several years. I have my own LEC that I go out to um, each year and it's kind of exciting because it's mine and I get to see it year after year and it's very remote. So we go camp out um, the night before. Uh, but if folks have any questions for Julie, please put them in the chat or if you're following on Facebook, you can put them in the comments. Um, also wanted to mention that uh, Carson Lake is one of the wildlife management areas that Julie um, mentioned that there's a number of them. I think that's the newest one, is that correct? I think so too, but I feel like there's one more that just happened too and I didn't wanna mess it up, so. <laughs> <laughs> so Carson Lake is part of the Lahontan Valley wetlands that Mike mentioned we will be featuring in Spring Wing um, and it is something that uh, Lahont and Audubon was involved in getting that transferred over to um, the state. So we're super excited about that area and definitely want to help with the stewardship of that area. Um, okay. And oh, yes, ahead. I have something really exciting to say when you're done. Oh, I was just going to say that a lot of the projects that you mentioned are not mutually exclusive to Endow. There are areas where Lahont and Audubon wants to be partnering with Endow. So um, things like we can host a planting event. Um, we want to steward areas like the WMA at Carson Lake, um, helping out with those education events. Um, so if, if any of those things are of interest to you, um, we can coordinate with Julie uh, directly or we can work through LAF and figure out how our two organizations can partner. But. What do you got to say about Carson Lake? <laughs> okay, so it's related. I cannot believe I almost forgot to say this, but I got to be honest, I had all these notes and I couldn't figure out how to present it with my notes on here. So I'm sure I forgot something that I really wanted to say, but I didn't forget this. So we are working and we're def I mean, definitely going to have Audubon involved 
in the very beginning of this process for sure. Um, but uh, down the line, we want to create a statewide uh, wildlife and birding trail. And so that would involve, you know, pinpointing these areas, these hotspots, if you will, as eBird likes to call them. And uh, well, we're definitely going to need help from Audubon in just picking those spots and then highlighting them and species and creating education materials. But that's kind of separate from volunteering. That's like full on partnership. But on the other hand, we want to have a volunteer force that is periodically checking these areas. Um, looking at what's there, whether that's birds, what's blooming, because we want to attract people to go there, we need to know what's there. Um, making sure that it is still accessible, it's still open, the same people own it, etc. those types of things. And we are definitely going to need a whole volunteer force for that. And um, tangentially also related, uh, which I'm trying to get um, the Nevada naturalists up north and make that more of a thing so we can get, you know, Audubon teaching those birding classes so that we can get these Nevada naturalists certified and then have those people checking these areas because they're going to have all the flora, fauna, birding, whatever, to check those areas and get us data and do community science, but also let us be able to market those areas to attract people to them better. So very exciting, but also we're like, we're at the ground floor, so. <laughs> lots of lots of exciting things happening out in the wildlife world and birding world. So um, lots of ways to get involved. Hopefully you can find something that's of interest to you. Um, but it doesn't look like we've got any questions. Um, so if I'm gonna give it, another minute I will mention that our April meeting is going to be one of our new members Jonathan Sokol he will be um, presenting on let me get it right uh, I wrote it down somewhere uh, the influence of birdsong on composers so he is actually a um musician and composer and he will be talking about how bird songs get incorporated into music and he's going to be talking about some classical music but i think he'll also be incorporating some pop music and different things so that should be an interesting and new talk so tune in for that as well as our upcoming art classes and our birds of tracky meadows classes and if you have questions or interest in volunteering, you can always reach out to Julie or you can contact um, us at Lahontan Audubon, contact at nevadaaudubon.org and we can connect you with a bunch of different projects that are happening, some partnerships with Endow, as well as some projects that we have going on our end. And with that, I want to thank you very much, Julie, for being here tonight and taking time to share the conservation opportunities that you have for volunteers and uh, I'm sure we'll be in touch soon. Thanks everybody for tuning in. All right, thank you, Julie. Thanks, Mike. Take care, everybody. <laughs>